Alrighty, chapter 14, heat, we continue on with exercise 14E, and this has to do with heat of change of states of matter. And the, the way that you need to think about this always is using your chemical intuition. You know it takes heat to melt ice, and you know it takes heat to boil water. So, what you may, and of course you know it takes heat to warm up water. The two pieces that might not feel all that comfortable to you is that it takes heat to warm up really cold ice to get it up to zero, like minus 30 ice up to zero. You warm up the ice before you can melt it at zero. And it, you can also have really, really hot steam, which means you can heat up steam once it is at 100 degrees Celsius and in the gaseous state. Okay, so the way to think about this is to keep this heat curve for water in mind. Temperature in degrees C goes from minus 50 up to 100 and beyond, and this is heat added. So, if we have minus 40 ice, let's say, hey, the ice in Antarctica is all minus 40 down there, right, because it, it's really cold. As we add heat to ice, it doesn't melt, not if we add the heat uniformly. Instead, it warms up, heats up the ice. Okay? Once we get to zero, that's when adding heat can either melt ice, if we add heat, or if we have ice at zero, and, or uh, water at liquid at zero, and we remove heat, we freeze the ice. So, depending on whether you're adding heat or losing heat, the curve either goes this way or this way. So, we melt ice by adding heat at zero until we get all the ice melted at zero. And then when we continue to add heat, we warm up the liquid from zero to 100 all the way until it starts to boil. But then we have to add heat until it all boils at zero, and then adding extra heat heats up the steam. All right? So, the two aspects are this change of state of matter from ice to liquid, or from liquid to gas, or gas to liquid, liquid to solid. The heat of fusion has to do with ice melting, or water liquid freezing. And these are the um, conversion factors that you would use. And for vaporizing liquid water or condensing steam down into liquid, these are the conversion factors that you use. And guess what? You get these. Okay? So here it is. Right here at the bottom. Heat of fusion of water. Heat of vaporization of water. Alright? So having that information, these problems are really quite simple. So let's take a look at them. Hit pause. I give you 10 minutes maximum to solve these. All you got to do is be careful with your sig figs and be careful with your units. All right. Have at it. Good luck. Come on back. All right. You're back. So calories are needed. How many to melt this much ice at zero into liquid water at zero. So all we're doing is melting the ice. So heat is what we want. That's going to be mass times the heat of fusion because we're dealing with melting ice. The mass is 6.9 kilograms, but if you notice the heat of fusion is in grams, so you have to do this conversion. What's bigger, a kilogram or a gram? kilogram, which means there's a whole bunch of grams in one kilogram. Do not mix these up. If you have to go back to chapter two to practice this, do it. You got to know your metric to metrics. All right, so that's the grams. Since they want calories, we're using this one. So it's 79.71 calories for every one gram. And that's it. number of sig figs has nothing to do with the temperature because it wasn't involved in the calculation. 2 infinite 4 
So the answer has two. The units that are left are calories. So what's this answer to two calories? Or I'm sorry, two sig figs? Well, let's see. 6.9 times 1,000 times 79.71 This is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the fifth calories. Yep, that's what I got. Okay, so that one is done. Piece of cake. Here, it's the same deal. Notice that it doesn't take any extra energy if we're going one way versus the other. It's just as easy to add heat as it is to remove heat. So, we do the same calculation, H is equal to M times heat, but this time we're vaporizing, we're condensing, okay? So heat of vaporization. I'll write it out, vaporization. Okay? So we're bringing the steam at 100 down to liquid at 100, but the amount of heat you have to remove is the same as the amount of heat that you would need to add to go from liquid at 100 to steam at 100. So the mass is 171 grams. This time they want joules and the heat of vaporization. So that's the conversion factor we use. 2258 joules per 1 gram. Grams cancel. We're left with joules it's going to be three sig figs because this one's four. So what's the answer to three sig figs? Let's just punch it in. 171 times 2258 equals. I get 3.86 times 10 to the fifth. Hopefully that's right. And this doesn't mean that every answer will be times 10 to the 5th. just turned out that way. All right. There's my dog. Hello. Um, all right. So we know the answer. Some dogs sneeze when they have to. It's one of those deals. All right. Hopefully you're good. Practice up. Be good at it. Good luck.